So you've got two devices and you want them to talk to each other. What are you going to use? A cable? No, it's not the past. You're going to use some sort of wireless technology and it's probably going to be Bluetooth. Yes, Bluetooth, the de facto wireless transmission standard that has become so common that we barely even think about it. But what is Bluetooth and more importantly, how does it work? Here's the fun part. The name Bluetooth comes from a 10th century king, Harold Bluetooth. The technology isn't that old though. It comes from 1994, which, relatively speaking, is comparably ancient. Ericsson, a Swedish communications company, invented Bluetooth. And then in 1998, it and four other companies, Nokia, Intel, IBM, and Toshiba, founded the Bluetooth Special Interest Group which is what gave the technology the kickstart it needed to become so widespread. That group now numbers over 30,000 members, by the way. Looking at the tech side of things, Bluetooth uses the same 2.4 gigahertz frequency that a lot of other wireless communications use. While we tend to think of it as a technology for one-on-one -on -one communication, it can handle networks of up to eight devices. So sure, it can send a page to your printer in the other room, but it can also connect four game controllers, for example. These days, there are three different classes of Bluetooth available. Class one is the most powerful and can transmit up to 100 meters or around 330 feet. Class two is the most common and retains the original Bluetooth range of about 10 meters or 33 feet. Class three is the least powerful and is only good for distances of about one meter or around 3.2 feet. While Bluetooth works in the 2.4 gigahertz range, it actually uses 79 different bands within that range. As data is sent, Bluetooth breaks it up into smaller, more easily transferable packets. Once these packets have been divided, they're individually distributed over those 79 bands with Bluetooth intelligently figuring out which bands to put which pieces of data. If this sounds complex, it's because it is, especially if you keep in mind that this is all happening in microseconds. Unlike Wi-Fi or your mobile 5G connection, Bluetooth doesn't actually use any data from your mobile provider or your ISP. That's good news for people in today's world who connect their smartphones to their cars and stream music, for example. Bluetooth also doesn't require a central router like Wi-Fi does. Now there are a few different types of types here when we're talking about Bluetooth, but to start, let's go over the two types of Bluetooth transmissions that are available in consumer devices. The first is Bluetooth basic rate slash enhanced data rate, and the second is low energy. With basic Bluetooth, you always need two devices to be paired for data to flow. Introduced in Bluetooth 4.0, Low energy is great for devices where you want minimal impact on battery, like wearables or headphones, for example. Now on to the versions of Bluetooth that you'll see listed if you're buying something with Bluetooth built in. Bluetooth 1.0 through 3.0 we lump together as Bluetooth Classic because you won't see this in a lot of newer devices. Bluetooth 4.0 is the most common type of Bluetooth you'll see these days, and speeds with that protocol are limited to about 1 megabit per second. Bluetooth 5.0 brings notable improvements to the low energy mode. Specifically, it can lower the speed and greatly increase the range, getting up to as much as 787 feet or around 240 meters. Finally, Bluetooth 5.1, the latest version, brings improvements to both speed and range. And there you go. From tethering your phone to wireless headphones to smart toothbrushes, Bluetooth is everywhere these days. And now you know a little bit more about how it works. For even more information, check out maketecheasier.com. There's a bunch of great stuff there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.